All right, I think I'll get started. This is 35 past the hour. Um, so um, good afternoon. My name is Arun Gupta, and uh, I'm giving this talk on my son's behalf, who actually summaried the talk. Uh, my Twitter handle is on the top, and my son's handle is on the bottom. Um, this is mostly a fun project that we did earlier this year um, on how to manage uh, your Docker containers using Minecraft. Um, my, uh, well, I've been, I'm, a, I'm a Docker captain. What that means is I know a few things about Docker, and I um, help uh, people educate about Docker. My son is an avid Minecraft player. He has written a book on uh, Minecraft modding, so he knows he know a few things about Minecraft. This particular project really gave us an opportunity where we could spend a little bit more bonding, quality time, talking about geeks as we do. So um, again, as I said, this is a presentation that he presented at DockerCon earlier this year. So his level is pretty good at Minecraft. You know, um, His Java level is sort of OK, um, but his Docker level was pretty minimal. And his Docker level, pretty much Docker experience, pretty much comes from watching me you know, spinning up containers, creating images, where he's sitting right next to me. And he'll see that, what is this Docker file? What is this compose? What is this swarm? So that's sort of his Docker experience. And then I will share towards the end of the project how the whole experience uh, helped him improve his Docker knowledge. So what is uh, MobyCraft? MobyCraft is the name that is the name of the project, essentially. But essentially, it's a client-side Docker mod, um, uh, client-side Minecraft mod, actually. Now, <clears throat> Minecraft is a game. It's a multiplayer game where you have a launcher that you download, and you typically connect to a server, and then you, know, you run the game over there. Other players can join the game. So it's a multiplayer game. You know, it's the biggest craze um, uh, these days. Now, there is a server-side mod. On a, on, on a mine, in the game of Minecraft, you can have a server-side mod and a client-side mod. Server-side mod, of course, is shared by all the players. Client-side mod is in your environment. But client-side mod has a lot more capabilities. Now, for server-side mod, there is a mod already written called as Dockercraft, which is written by Gaten and Adrian. So many thanks to them, because um, when I was talking to my son, he explored on this. He looked at Dockercraft. He liked it, but that was written in Lua and Go and all other languages. Language was not an issue, but the issue for him was, you know what, Dad, I can only do only so many things in a server-side mod for Minecraft. So he said, OK, I'm going to have a make a client-side mod, because it can have a lot more capabilities. But essentially what it does is, it gives you the ability, if you are a Minecrafter, on how you can visually see Minec uh, Docker containers you know, starting up, going down, you know, heat maps, and stuff like that in a Minecraft um, UI. Uh, from within Minecraft, you can run all sorts of Docker commands. You can start a container. You can scale a container. You can shut down a container. Command is just one part of it, but the visual aspect is the more fun part of it. And I'll get to that in a second. Um, we added new Minecraft blocks, new items. So a uh, container is starting up, so that is represented as a Minecraft block. And now um, um, a new uh, a sword is there. With a sword, you can kill a block. Well, that's what kids do in a Minecraft. It will actually kill a t container. So those were the new commands and the new visual representations that were added to the game itself. And um, the way this was built is, you know, me, me, uh, my son and I, we wrote a book uh, last year on Minecraft modding with Forge. It was really built upon that experience. So uh, we were using Eclipse primarily as our IDE. Um, so we were building using Eclipse IDE, you know, debugging, testing, all of that was done from within that itself. So in the game of Minecraft, this is how a Docker container would look like. This is a custom block. You know, so we took the Docker logo, slapped it on a, a Minecraft block, and this is a custom container that he built, essentially. Well, what do you do in this? Um, so you can see your Minecraft containers, uh, uh, Docker containers in Minecraft. Each container, essentially, if you look closely, it has, uh, is a box with buttons and signs. So if you look at it on the, right, on the very top itself, for example, it, there is a Docker logo over there. On the left side, you'll see um, two, but two information button. In the information, it'll tell you what is a container name, what is a container ID. Now, if you go into the room, essentially, in the room, there is a start and stop button. So you can start the container from there itself, stop the container from there itself. The big focus really was not about teaching Docker commands, but rather teaching Docker way of doing things using Minecraft. Uh, the container. This is a gray container. What that means is the container is running. If the container stops, you now it becomes dark gray. Or if, um, uh, actually, if the container is stopped, it becomes red. So there were different variations of the Minecraft uh, block 
essentially, which were changing based upon the state of the container. Uh, we also created a new container one. Well, I say we. Uh, he did the, all the coding. I helped him with the thought process only. Uh, but essentially, a new Minecraft item was created, uh, which is a container one. And today, you know, what you do is if you take the container one, which is sort of what people kids do in Minecraft, and you hit it on a, a Minecraft um, block, um, it'll kill the container. Uh, but that's sort of what the idea was. But then the idea was that you could add other modes to it as well. Um, the Minecraft was constantly polling the Docker host where the containers are running, and it was refreshing the re uh, dis uh, display. That was another feature as part of this effort. Um, several commands in the game itself. Let's say you are not a Minecraft kind of player, but you like the visual representation, but you want to run the Minecraft uh, Docker commands in Minecraft. So Docker PS, Docker Run, Docker Images. I won't go into the detail of those commands, but essentially those commands were exposed. And essentially, they were written as Minecraft commands for you. Um, certain convenience commands, let's say you fire up 10 containers, you want to kill all of them. So you just say Docker kill all, and it'll kill all the containers. And again, the visual representation will be refreshed accordingly. So you can uh, remove the stopped containers. Uh, the fun one was you know, uh, Docker heat map. Well, I work for Couchbase, so my son was firing up a few Couchbase containers. Couchbase being a database takes up a little bit more memory than a web server. So he fired up a few bunch of Nginx containers. So he's saying, I want to see which container is taking more memory, more CPU, and so on and so forth. So he fired up a whole bunch of Nginx containers and a whole bunch of Couchbase containers, and then he was generating heat map. Now, as an admin, you can stand back and say, OK, you know what? If a container is on fire, actually turn on the fire on that in Minecraft game. There was a Docker help command, which would allow you to kind of learn more about the Docker commands. On the left, what you see is what he created was a 3D model you know, of uh, Moby, which is the mascot for do Docker, essentially. Um, and this is a custom 3D model and texture. So essentially, well, um, we couldn't figure out an animal in um, Minecraft which could actually swim and has some other properties. So we. We created this model, but this model, you know, if you drop this model, which is a uh, veil, basically, if you drop this model in water, it'll pop around. But if you drop this in a land, it'll walk around as well. Um, on the right side, one of the things that we worked with, uh, actually, for this particular project, we also worked with Netflix. Uh, and I'll show you a sample of how Netflix was using this in their production servers. But essentially, what you see on the right side is the Netflix chaos monkey. So now, imagine you have hundreds of containers running around. You spin a bunch of chaos monkeys you know, as Minecraft. Now that chaos monkey is literally going around randomly and killing containers. And you're seeing your application live in production reacting to those chaos monkeys. The best part about this is this is 100% um, open source. So uh, you can go to bit.ly link as a Mobicraft. Um, it's on my son's uh, GitHub repo. So you can see the code over there. So what he learned as part of the process, essentially, well, uh, the basic Docker terminology. You know, I mean, as we started getting into it, you know, what is really a container? Um, so his point was, container is an application packaged up and wrapped in a nice bow so that it can be easy to download and run. Now, that's sort of how a middle school kid would understand what a Docker container is, whether it's OCI compliant, whether it's running on multiple hosts, whether it's running on Kubernetes. That's too much details for them at that point of time. Um, he understood the flow between Docker client, host, and hub. How, they do, how do they interact? Because we were using the default hub, so he understood that concept. How do they really talk to each other? He also understood the aspect that they're actually talking to each other using REST API. Because what we were using was the Docker Java API, which is sort of a Java abstraction on top of the REST. He also understood. You know, that there could be client and server version mismatch because we actually face some problems ourselves. Um, uh, in the initial versions, we were using Docker machine primarily because that's how where we were running up all our uh, containers, and that's where we were seeing the visual representation. Um, Docker ps command, you know, how do you see the containers? So the basic uh, concepts uh, was, were well understood. Dash dash help was very very helpful for him. I mean, as it is for me, because any any time he would start, he would say Docker dash dash help. Show me the list of options that are available. He'll pick those options that make sense from Minecraft perspective and put them into the game. Uh, Docker Swarm, we talked about it. We didn't implement it yet because primarily the Docker Java API is still missing those abstractions. Uh, some more learnings, you know, in terms of a Java skill. As I said, he's uh, comfortable. You know, he can play around now. He's a freshman, uh, but he learned more about access modifiers, 
break and continue statements. There were several places where the code was being repeated. So he kind of dried the code and essentially put them into a class. Um, we also learned the concept, you know, he learned the concept primarily using painful, you know, how you could shade jars in Gradle. This was important because end of the day, we wanted to give a jar, take this jar, drop it into your Minecraft launcher, and now you can start managing containers. Um, asynchronous callbacks, you know, we were used for results, you know, because you were constantly polling, you know, the server if the new container has been run or not. Uh, what is Netflix Titus? Well, Netflix Titus is the container cloud at Netflix. I highly recommend this talk by Andrew Spiker, um, on, um, uh, which is a talk given at QCon. But essentially, uh, what, we, what we worked with Netflix is they took MobiCraft and then they ran MobiCraft on their Titus cloud. And then they um, created a time lapse video for us. So thank Andrew Spiker for that. Um, and in the video, what you'll see is how the containers are starting up, going down. And uh, you'll see the entire uh, show over there. But essentially, the cluster on which MobiCraft ran, it had about 130 R38 XLs. That's a pretty kick-ass machine. You know, so it is equivalent to almost 4,000 virtual CPUs, uh, 31 terabytes of memory, and 325 containers at peak that were running. So quite a few containers were visualized. Let's take a look. And of course, you see a Netflix commercial to begin with. This was done um, for DockerCon, so this was done about June time frame. So you'll see some ads from July, August, September. Okay, so the very first thing that you do in the game by itself is you will set the start pause. That, okay, I'm in Minecraft, set me the start position. That means you're gonna render the containers over here. And once that is done, this is uh, a blue container. Now, what Netflix did was they manipulated the game wherein they wanted, they were running a whole bunch of different applications. And the game of Minecraft, you have this concept of a sheep fool. So they took the sheep fool based upon the application the container belongs to. They actually colored the container you know, with that color. So here, if you can see on the screen, there is a purple, there's a brown, there's a green, there's an orange, red, different kind of containers. So now you can step back and take a look at the application and say, hey, you know what? I know what all kind of containers are running over here because here is my legend. Green means this, red means this. So you can see the containers you know, as they are starting up, as they are going down. This is a time lapse, essentially. Now. On the right side of the screen, what you see is a bunch of blue containers. Uh, these are um, algorithms that run every night on Netflix Cloud, essentially. They look at your, these are machine learning algorithms. They look at your uh, patterns. What did you log, when did you log in? What um, movies did you click on? And then based upon that, it generates your Lolomo, which is the main page of your Netflix.com, your profile page. Or uh, Lolomo is a full form for a list of list of movies. So it kind of creates a list of list of movies on your main Netflix page. So these are the machine learning algorithms that are running and then again are running as containers. So you can see as the containers are going up and down, uh, they are being represented over here. Again, a blue and a red. So depending upon the time of the day, those containers are rendered accordingly. There are no uh, chaos monkeys in this one particularly. There you go, so that's a quick demo. Now, one of the things that we also did was, you know, we wanted to run this across multiple Docker providers. Uh, well, um, so we could run this on a Docker machine. Uh, Netflix has a Titus cloud, and the Titus cloud, they have, they use Docker containers, but their orchestration, their REST API builds on top of Docker API, but it's not exactly the Docker API. So they built a different Docker provider for it, which can talk to that REST API. And then for testing purposes, we also built a mock provider where I don't have to run a Docker container or a bunch of Docker containers. I can just grab the data from a JSON, and then using REST API, I can read it. So there was a provision that was made in MobiCraft where we could have multiple Docker providers. So one of the things that we are looking at is possibly you know, be able to plug in 
a Mesos provider here or a Kubernetes provider for that sake. How you can help? Well, there's code review, of course. You know, he's, uh, he just became a high schooler, like not just, but about a couple of months back he be before he became a high schooler. So if you try it out, if it doesn't work, file issues, you know, uh, send pull requests, um, test in your environment, you know, see if you can take MobyCraft and use it to manage your uh, set of Docker containers, see what works, what doesn't work, file issues. Uh, the GitHub repository, of course, is open source. And here's a message that my son wanted to say. If Netflix can use MobyCraft to manage their containers, you can too. I think my time is up, uh, but I will be around, and if you have any questions, thank you. <laughs>